friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me here on the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel for another fun interactive card. Today I'm going to be using the Twinkle Lights from Pear Blossom Press. I also have my press stamp and die bundle. I'm going to be using the cityscape here from my Avery L superheroes stamp set. I also have this adorable fandom stamp set from Scrappy Boy Stamps called be spelled and I'm going to be using that adorable witch on her broom as well as the moon and two stars and of course we have our favorite world's best foam tape when it comes to assembly. I'm going to start with making my background and I'm going to stamp my little city scene first. Now I will say, unfortunately, this stamp set is retired. I totally forgot that it retired when I made this card. And as I was getting my supply list together, I discovered that you can't find it anywhere. So I would definitely just search for another brand like City Scene. There's lots of dye options out there as well, which I think would be much easier and quicker to make this card if there was a die rather than a stamp um, but there are a lot of options out there so use what you have in your stash if you want to replicate this card or just you know take a look at other brands out there that have really cute city skylines but I'm going to be stamping this image onto some navy blue cardstock and I'm using my misty to help me make sure that I get a nice clean stamp so I can stamp it twice if I need to. I'm starting with adding my anti-static powder using my rabbit hole designs tool and I'm using some clear embossing ink to stamp this image down. Like I said I do stamp it twice so I can get a really good coverage and a nice clean stamp. Now I'm going to be using embossing glaze to be my embossing powder. I wanted a tone on tone look, although it does turn out kind of dark. I probably could have used black and you wouldn't have known the difference, but this is the chipped sapphire Tim Holtz Dis Distress embossing glaze. And I just covered my cityscape. And once I had good coverage of all that powder, I'm going to use my heat gun to melt that glaze down and it just creates a pretty like I said, tone on tone kind of look um, cityscape. If you don't have this, you definitely can use clear or black because I think it almost looks black uh, when I was done embossing. Once it cooled down, I'm just using a Swiffer cloth to help me pick up some of that extra anti-static powder. And then I grabbed chipped sapphire in my Distress ink pad and I'm gonna use a blending brush to darken up the bottom of my city. So I'm just going up into the buildings, trying not to go any further than the embossed top of my cityscape. Um, but just wanted to add a little bit of dimension and darken up the bottom of what will be the bottom of my card. Once that is done, I have the coordinating die and I'm going to use some repositionable tape to hold that die in place while I run it through my die cut machine. Now another idea for this card, if you're going to be using Easy Lights and replicating this card in the future, if you use a die version, a lot of dies cut out the windows of the cityscape and I think it would look so cool having lights show up inside of the building as well. So just another idea for you um, in the future with this type of card design. Now that my city is done, I'm going to continue stamping and this time I'm going to stamp my little flying witch on her broom. I'm going to be using my alcohol markers to color her in so I'm stamping her on some alcohol marker friendly white cardstock and an alcohol marker friendly black ink. I again stamp twice. I love that about using a misty so I can make sure I have a nice clean crisp image and then I'll go ahead and zoom in here so you can see my coloring. I use Ohuhu art markers. These are alcohol markers and I prefer Honolulu style. So I have the brush and then I like Honolulu B because it's brush on one end and nib on the other. So for my broom, I'm starting with YR180 as the darker tone and then I bring in YR172. Originally that was going to be my lighter tone, but it wasn't light enough for me. So then I grabbed YR170 and filled in the rest of my broom. So there are three colors for the broom, but you could get away with two in my opinion. For the broom handle or the stick, I'm using E110 as my lighter tone. I 
wasn't really thinking about adding shadow here, but I brought in E370 to just add a little bit of shadow to where she is sitting. For my skin tone of this witch, I'm going with the Fandom Original Girl skin color. So I'm going to use R26 as the lighter tone, and I'm adding it where there would be shadow. So on the bottom of her legs, on under her arm, where her neck is, like on the back side of her neck, and under her head. And then for her face, I'm just going to go around the outside, cover in her ears, and also add in a little bit more detail for her nose. The mid-tone I'm using is R29, and I'm going to fill in her arms and legs and neck and ears, but only bring it in a little bit more, increasing that shadow on her face. So just bringing in that color more, but I will use one more color to finish off her skin tone. So I wanted the center of her face to be kind of the lightest glowy part of her face. And the final color I'm using is R18, which is a nice peachy tone. So I went ahead and went over her arms and legs. I think I forgot her neck, but I would do her neck and ears as well. And then for her face, I'm using it to blend in those two shades and bring that color into the center of her face and then also blending out that nose line that I created a little bit. So just wanted that glow of her face to be the center of her face. Then for her cheeks, I'm bringing an R21 and just kind of creating a nice little blush rosy but subtle cheek color. For her hair, it's also orange in the cartoon version from this fandom TV show. So I'm going to bring in Y4 to start the color of her hair. This is going to be kind of more my mid-tone color, but I'm just adding it to where the shadow would be for her hair. And then I brought in YR170 as my darker tone and just adding a little bit more to that shadow. And then finally, the lightest color that I will bring in and just completely color in all of her hair is is YR110. I wanted it to have that kind of orange but yet blonde, I guess like a strawberry orange blonde hair if that makes sense. Uh, so just really trying to saturate my paper and color in and blend all those different shades together with this final light color. For her hat and dress, it's going to be black, but I don't color with black. I color with darker grays. So I'm starting with NG09. I completely colored in her shoes and the underside of her hat, but this will be the shadow, the darkest color for the rest of her hat, as well as her dress and cape. I'm only going to show how I colored in her hat, so you don't have to see me use the same color combination for too much longer, but just wanted to show you the three colors that I used. So after that uh, lay down of the darkest shadow, my mid-tone is going to be NG07, and then my lightest color will be NG06, and I'm going to use that to be kind of like the highlight area of her hat and her dress and her cape. Finally, I'm going to bring in some red color to finish off her broom and hat. The darker color that I'm using is R170 and I'm using it to be the shadow. So I'm going to extend that color into the hat, try to make it look round so there's a bit of a shine in the middle as well as on the very edges of the hat. So that will be my darker color and then my lighter color R160 uh, completely filling in the rest of that broom and her hat. And that will finish off the coloring of this adorable witch. I do use a white gel pen to add a little bit of highlights just where I think it would look nice as well as like the little apples of her cheeks. And then I'm using the coordinating die to cut her out. Again, using some mint repositionable tape to keep that die in place while I run it through my die cut machine. So I'll go ahead and set her aside, but I'm, you know, really playing with the idea. I'm really excited of how this card is going to come together. Next, let's move on to making our background. I'm going to add some Distress Oxides to create a night sky. So I'm starting with cutting my cardstock down to four and a half by five and three quarters. It's larger than A2. And that's just so I can not worry about the edges of my card. Um, I will trim it down later once I have my card background colored in. It, I like having a little bit of wiggle room to cut my backgrounds down in case there's an area that I like better or maybe the edge of my paper didn't turn out so great and I can just trim it off. It gives me that little bit of wiggle room. So I'm starting with broken china on the bottom of my card and then I'm bringing in prize ribbon on the top and that center section I'm overlaying both those colors. So I want that light 
or lighter broken china on the bottom and the darker prize ribbon on top, but I want them to fade into each other. So I do overlap the two colors quite a bit in the middle to really give it kind of a like sunset night sky. Again, using the cartoon uh, intro of this show as inspiration. It's up on my camera or my camera, my computer screen uh, while I'm ink blending. I also brought in Chip Sapphire again just to add a little bit more darkness at the top of my background. The Chip Sapphire blue um, buildings will be at the bottom of my card and then I have a little bit of Chip Sapphire on the top. I don't know, I'm just using it to kind of sandwich in the blues on my background. To create some stars in my background, I have some bleed proof white fine art paint and I'm adding it with some water onto my glass mat here and using a fine brush to splatter that all over the background to create a nice starry night sky. I'll go ahead and set that aside to dry while I clean up my desk and wipe down my grip mat and all my tools. Um, and then once I was done cleaning, my background was dry so I can move on to starting where I'm going to add my twinkle lights. So I'm grabbing the dies for the moon and the two stars. I'm actually going to be doing the die cutting before I do my stamping. So to help with understanding or knowing where I'm going to use my dies to cut out the moon and the stars, I'm gonna figure out first where I want to trim my background. So I'm looking at the building and my witch to see where I needed to trim off my background. It actually turned out, I think, really nice, so I didn't need to do it larger than A2, but that's okay. Again, I like having the ability to cut off parts of my card that I don't like. So I have a rough idea of the layout. I also am gonna use the Witch You Were Here sentiment, so just making sure I like the layout. And now let's move on to trimming this panel down to be A2 in size. I'm just grabbing my paper trimmer and I'm gonna cut off the quarter inch off the bottom. So I have my five and a half, and then I cut off a little bit off the left and a little bit off the right to make it four and a quarter. So it is A2 in size. I'll go ahead and place my buildings onto the bottom and I'll add my witch to the center of the background and I'm also going to grab in my sentiment just making sure I have my dies for my moon and my stars you know perfectly in place I have enough room for my sentiment and my witch before I do my die cutting very much a measure twice cut once kind of vibe here <laughs> Once I have my moon and stars in place onto my background where I want them, I'll go ahead and grab my cutting plate sandwich to add this panel to my background. So I'm going to be grabbing my magic mat. I also have a magnetic base for my um, big shot switch machine. So I'll go ahead and just make sure that the dies are in a good spot. I'll grab my cover like cutting plate, which isn't I'm not actually cutting into it, but the cutting plate to run that through my big shot switch. And once that comes back out, you'll see that I have my moon and stars die cut in place. And that's gonna be where I'm gonna put my LEDs for the twinkle lights. Uh, so my lights will shine through those openings. So I'll go ahead and put away my dies. I'm gonna take my background. I'm actually gonna set aside these little moons and stars. I don't know why. I tend to save everything. They'll probably get tossed eventually, but maybe they might find themselves in a shaker card in the future. I have a piece of soft white vellum and I'm going to just trim it to fit behind my panel where the stars and the moon are. So I'm just using my trimmer to trim this down to fit perfectly behind that opening. Once I have that in place, I'm going to stamp now the stars and the moon onto the vellum. And I'm going to use my clear embossing powder again and some more embossing glaze. This time I'm gonna use squeeze lemonade. I want some yellow stars and a yellow moon, but I'm going to use my panel that I die cut with the vellum behind it to line up exactly where those stars and moon need to go. So I went ahead and didn't, I cut out the parts where I'm putting the stamps inside of the openings of the die because my head was covering it anyway. I was leaning over to make sure that those stamps were perfectly aligned. But I went ahead and stamped them with my clear embossing ink and now I'm grabbing the embossing glaze to add the yellow, again squeeze lemonade, to those images. 
Once I get the powder covering them, I'll go ahead and put my powder away and then use my heat gun, just like I did with my buildings, to melt that powder down. I'm going to add my double sided adhesive now, but I'm going to set it aside because afterwards I will need to mark where my LEDs need to go. I'm happy that I remembered before adding the uh, vellum behind my panel. I tend to do that a lot, so I was happy that I caught myself. But I'm trimming my vellum so I don't have to worry about lining it up perfectly. Um, I'll use the images and the die cut openings to line them up, but I didn't want to have to worry about vellum sticking out any of the sides just in case, you know, just making sure that it hides behind the front of my panel. So I'm adding that adhesive on all four sides of my vellum background as well as a couple strips in the middle that you won't see. Um, and then let's go ahead and get our LEDs marked so I know where to put my twinkle lights. So I'm going to take my A2 panel and I'm layering it on top of my card base. I'm not gluing anything down but just making sure that they're lined up. And I have my pencil and I'm going to mark the center of my stars and kind of the center of my moon so I know exactly where I want to add my LEDs. So I'll go ahead and take out one of my twinkle lights. I have a five pack but Pear Blossom Press offers the twinkle lights in a two pack, a three pack, and a five. So I have my twinkle light and the battery. I'm going to get some tape ready. I like to use clear scotch tape when um, tacking down my LEDs. Of course, I got to put the battery in and make sure it's working. This will be the first of many times you see me <laughs> test my easy lights. Um, and I'll go ahead and follow the pencil marks that I made to place the LED. So just one at a time. Lining up the LED, making sure it's facing up, right where I made my little pencil mark, and then using my tape to secure the LED wires in place. So after I get all three of those added down, um, I'm not going to attach my press button yet. I'm going to show you another way to make sure that you have your push button lined up perfectly uh, once I'm done getting all of these LEDs in place. Um, so I've done the first two. Here I am making sure my third one is in place and I'm also trying to make sure the wires aren't going to show. Um, it won't be very obvious. Now I do will have vellum underneath so you won't see anything but just trying to angle my wires so I don't have to worry about them accidentally showing up uh, in the opening. So now I will peel off all the release paper from the adhesive on my vellum piece. I did add the vellum on the same side as my embossing powder because I'm going to adhere it to the back side of my panel. So pardon my head again, but I'm lining up the embossed images into the die hole, the die cut openings, um, and making sure that they look good when I press the light. How fun is that? I just love Easy Lights. I'm so happy you guys are here watching and learning more about Easy Lights because they are really the coolest products out there. I have a yellow alcohol marker and I'm coloring in on the back side of my images, the moon and the stars, just to help make them look more yellow. So now we're going to do some stamping. Before I do that, I will glue on my cityscape to the bottom of my panel so I can make sure that I stamp my sentiment and my press um, stamp image sentiment, I guess, uh, to my panel. Um, I just want to make sure I have them placed in a good spot. So I'll go ahead and glue my buildings onto the bottom of my panel. The only thing that will be popped up on my card will be my witch, um, as well as the panel. I'm going to pop it up to my card base to make sure I have plenty of room for my um, twinkle light battery mechanism. So once those buildings are glued onto the panel, I am going to grab my Misty and we're going to stamp my sentiments. Of course, I tested the lights again. I can't help it. I absolutely love testing my lights. I'm going to line up my panel inside my little Misty and then I will grab my two stamps. So I have the Witch You Were Here and I have the kind of cursive font of the press from the Pear Blossom Press Stamp and Die Bundle. I use my magnet to hold my panel in place inside my Misty as well as where I want my witch to go. So I can make sure I have plenty of room for that when I'm adding my sentiment 
doing my best to get it centered. And then I decided to add the press kind of above the little hamburger restaurant in my scene. Now I know in the original old cartoon intro, there's no hamburger restaurant, but you know what? We're going with what we have in our stash. So now that I have those placed where I want them, I'm going to take my witch out and I'll pick up my two stamps on the Misty. It looks centered, so I'll go ahead and grab some ink. I wasn't sure if I was going to use black or blue, but I do end up using a blue ink to stamp both of those stamps. It's Medieval Blue Versifying Claire. And um, before I take out the push, I put in my card panel and then stamped push one more time. So that way I know exactly where to line up the button on my battery pack. Easy peasy. So I'll go ahead and grab some double-sided adhesive and I'm going to put a piece of that behind the battery pack, peel off the release paper, and then get that lined up so the button is right where it says push on my card base. I'm going to clean up my desk a bit because I tend to make a mess every time I craft, but I'll get those lined up and glued down to my card base. I'm also going to grab some more clear scotch tape to get my wires kind of centered, making sure they're not bending or, you know, going to break in any way, but get that centered where they won't be seen and adhered down in place with my clear tape. After that, I'm going to grab my world's best phone tape so I can get some adhesive onto the uh, back of my panel. I know that my push button is going to be on the bottom, so I'm going to focus mostly on adding my foam tape along the four sides of my back panel and then also around to add some stability, uh, the vellum half, the top half of my card. And then I will add a couple pieces of that foam tape next to my battery panel on the card base instead of on the back of this panel, just so I know that I'm not going to be, you know, covering my battery pack with foam adhesive. So once that's all done, I peeled off all the release paper and then I'm going to add this panel to my card base. I love that the world's best foam tape is repositionable for a little bit. So in case I did a terrible job at lining them up, I could peel it off and try again. But honestly, it worked out really nice the first time. I have some super thin foam. This is one millimeter thick from scrapbook.com and I completely covered the back of my witch. I wanted her to pop up, but I already have plenty of dimension because of my world's best foam tape. So I used a thin foam to pop up my witch to the center of my card, fitting her in between the moon and the stars and my sentiment. And here you can see my card light up with those twinkle lights. She is so cute. I love this card. It turned out perfect exactly how I imagined it. And I'm so happy I was able to share this design and idea here on the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. Here are a few close-ups of my card. You can find a list of everything that I use down below in the description as well as all of Pear Blossom Press social media so you can find even more inspiration. We hope you'll subscribe and come back if you're new here and thanks again for watching. Bye!